Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Steinman here with my co-host Chelsea Penner. This is Crypto Daily News, episode number 30. The date is August 18th. We're here on a Saturday night. Instead of being out there at the beautiful ocean, looking at all these bars and lounges, we're actually just here to educate you, the viewer. And Turn up. we actually have some really cool things to talk about today. One is that there's actually been some cool announcements from none other than Russia, believe it or not. but. The stuff that they've come out with today is really cool and I'll tell you why. Essentially is they're testing a pilot program for an electoral college for voting through the blockchain. I mean, this is something that is I think in desperate need for everyone, especially here in the US, so we don't have to go and fill out those paper ballots anymore. Thousand you know? percent, thousand percent. Just like we were talking about, you know, millenni millennials. We do everything from our phones, you know, literally everything. We can order food, we can yeah. order weed, we can order people. people. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, for, don't get the wrong idea. If, we want, if you want a massage, they will, they will, they will massage to you, you know? Yeah. They will come mm -hmm. and massage you, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, if you guys are, you know, that type of uh, person, maybe you're a millennial or Gen Z, and you also feel this sentiment where you're like, Dang, this whole filling out a ballot makes me feel like my grandparents. Well, mm -hmm. there is change coming. And yeah. There's change for the better. You know? Well, the whole filling out a ballot is very archaic. Yeah. Uh, I think it would get more people involved. They can just like do 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 on their phone. Oh they, yeah. Done. Voted. Oh yeah. Like mo mobile is supposed to be simple and easy, you know, and technology mm -hmm. is supposed to make our lives easier, not more difficult. Like for instance, let's just say hypothetically, if this is our second time shooting this live stream because it didn't work the first time. I mean, that, that would be that would be a you know a reason of technology not working how you thought it would. Right. So you know, uh, another cool thing that happened today was actually this company called Crypto Facilitates. They are partnered with the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and they have announced that in addition to Litecoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, they are now announcing Bitcoin Cash as an indice on their platform to where you can actually buy it as part of an index. And that's pretty cool, I think. If you want to check out them, you can go to their website, CryptoFacilities.com. Um, I think that, that indexes are a way to um, somewhat like lower risk. You know, a lot of people, maybe if they don't know about cryptocurrency or they're, um, you know, wanting to put like millions and millions and they wanted to lower the risk as much as possible. It's just easier sometimes. Index. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you have a portfolio of a handful of cryptos that you believe in, if one tanks and another is up, then it kind of offsets that risk and it right. mitigates it. So I think this is a pretty cool thing that they're announcing. Some other cool things that happened in the market today, one was Coinbase issuing a patent with them trying to improve their security for their users. Another thing was um, Ripple actually announcing partnerships to get listed on different exchanges in the Philippines and Mexico, as well as on Bittrex as well with XRapid. And so I think overall there is some interesting things happening in the crypto space and also with blockchain in general. Um, well, there was some there was some FUD with Ethereum that we yeah. should definitely discuss because Ethereum did drop below three hundred. It's actually right now at two ninety four, um, which which is an all time well it's at a yearly low because this time last year was over three hundred. Yeah. So that that that's it's interesting because um, we live and we learn right and technology is, is still brand new with cryptocurrency um, Kevin explain what happened with with the crash with Ethereum yes yeah, so essentially what happened a couple weeks ago was the mainnet went down and that is crazy because what this means is that when cryptocurrency is being mined typically there's a transaction cost it's called gas right and so the cost for the gas is maybe like in a sense under 20 cents or so but when it gets when this type of thing happens and it goes from being like twenty cents to like fifty eight dollars, it's crazy. That's freaking a huge change, you know. Yeah. Um. This actually is very like this can kill a business if they're doing things in volume because of just the fact that the price goes up so much. For miners, is great because that means they that, made money. Yeah. Every every well, hash I did, you're actually. solving. <laughs> yeah. Every hash you're solving then is like making you more. But yeah. at the same time, if you're someone who's like trading in these large volumes. We're trying to send money to yeah. each other, like it's main purpose, you know, peer yeah. to peer. Yeah, it's definitely gonna offset what it's supposed to save you. Like yeah. you may as well just give your money to Bank of America and get screwed because that's what they do to you. So <laughs> anyway. Well actually, so Vitalik, the founder of Ethereum, 
uh, is coming up with a lot of new technologies, at least three. One in particular um, is proof of stake. And they've been talking about this for a while, but I think because of what happened a couple weeks ago, it's really gonna happen really soon. So the more Ethereum you own, obviously the more you'll make because if you have a stake of Ethereum, then you'll be making dividends off of that. And it also helps the network. Just holding Ethereum in wallets helps the network to move, move smoothly. Mm -hmm. And I've been an Ethereum miner for quite some time, so this will be a huge change for the cryptocurrency industry as a whole because a lot of big mining facilities prefer to mine Ethereum. So there's probably going to be a lot of crazy ups and downs with Ethereum while they're you know, getting some new implementations in place and the new technology that they're bringing on, including Casper, as well as something that they call sharding. <laughs> Why? Uh, what, Why? What is, that all, what is that all about? I gotta know. Honestly, I'm not the right person to ask because it, it, it's, it's, it's brand new technology that they're using that will just basically help the, um, it's kind of like a lightning network, but specifically for Ethereum. That, and again, don't hold me to that. There's a lot more highly technical mm -hmm. verbiage that goes into that, but but sharding is one of the yeah. technologies. And some of these technologies they may not implement until you know 2020, but um, for now, they definitely are looking at doing the proof of stake pretty quickly. That's awesome. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that sounds cool, especially because with EOS, that's one thing that they do as well, where you know they require EOS and people to lock up some coins to power that network. And I think it's cool where if you own EOS, let's just say if you own a hundred of them, when every new DAP decentralized application is created on the EOS platform, you're paid on a one-to-one -one basis for that new application of their of their token or their currency that they come out with. Of course, the market still has to determine the value. It could be worth anywhere from like one penny to like one dollar. But you know, I think it's really crazy that that is something that gives you the possibility to essentially earn a percentage off of like EOS simply by holding it. Right. And, and, and the same thing with Ethereum. Right, Ethereum will do that. And then another really cool one is an uh, actually it's just an ICO. It's called CBXE. It's on crypto bulls. You earn daily Bitcoin dividends just for holding CBXE. Mm. And I've been earning an average of anywhere between like thirty dollars to sixty dollars a day just wow. for simply holding yeah, so I love proof of stake. I really do. I think it's more efficient. Um, obviously, a lot uh, better on the environment. A lot less electricity being used. Um, so I think that it'll be really great if Ethereum can move it to that. But of course, always the initial part of technology changing will cause the roller coaster ride up and down and FUD. And someone said that Ethereum will go under a hundred dollars this week. But I just think. I don't think I don't see that happening because I think that Vitalik is too intelligent and has too many new great things and new technologies that they're working on implementing for that to happen. And it also has the brand of number two, you know, right next to Bitcoin. So I don't see that happening. I think that's a lot of FUD, but yeah. it is gonna dip a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that happening either no. myself. But I think on that note of the volatile markets for the crypto space, one thing that's interesting to look at is the SEC. Right. Every time they make announcements, the market's like, oh, God, no, the ETFs aren't coming. Oh, wait, actually, they're coming in. No, never mind. No, they're not. And then right. it's just like all these different market moves are constantly fluctuating, largely based on the SEC's announcements. Right. Well, the psychology of people is like, ah, freak out as soon as an announcement is made. And then also a huge factor in the crypto market is the traders. Traders make a huge impact. And so they assume there's a lot of psychology with every announcement. So they make trades just based on the assumption of the psychology. And then there's a lot of newbies that don't really understand. And if they hear, oh, the SEC pushed off the pending ETF approval, they, ah, that sounds like bad news. I don't know what it means, yeah. but it sounds terrible. I need to sell yeah. my crypto. Yeah, one thing that's very important if you guys are speculating or trading, you want to do something called sentiment analysis. And sentiment analysis is really like, I'll put in an example to help you understand this because it's very important. Essentially, there's always going to be news out there and so you have to determine with your own judgment which news is more important than the others, okay? And so I'll put this in an example to make it very easy to understand. If you were driving your car and you arrive at a red light but there is a tornado behind you, you probably are not going to wait at that red light even if there's a cop next to you because there's a freaking tornado behind you so essentially you determine in that moment that the tornado behind you is more important to get away from than the the risk 
of the cop chasing after you, the cop is probably going to be the one going for it anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, is like, you have the risk of getting a ticket or the risk of dying. Which one do you think is more important, right? Probably dying. So, yeah, I mean, that's essentially the sentiment analysis. But if someone, for whatever reason, they didn't know what a tornado looked like, that would be hard for them to determine that that sentiment of that tornado has that impact mm -hmm. to kill them right right versus just like getting a ticket they may think it's just a cloud like oh this is an interesting cloud behind me whatever but you know it's a freaking tornado so in any event it's a good analogy the uh the markets today are you know down a little bit anywhere from between like two percent to eight percent respectively bitcoin's around six hundred six thousand three eighty nine we got ethereum at 294 we got Ripple at 32 cents. We got Bitcoin Cash at 546. And, you know. It was up actually. Everything was up. Well, not everything, but there was a lot of green earlier today. And actually, there was a couple coins that mooned this week. I think Ripple because of the news, mm -hmm. and uh, VeChain because of the immunizations and the scare in China mm -hmm. that they were giving um, these immunizations that were full of crap and garbage and causing problems. So when you put immunizations on the blockchain, it holds companies accountable to to um, help people understand what actually is in these immunizations. And the blockchain as a whole does that to every industry. It helps every business be held accountable for what we're putting in our bodies, for what we're paying for, et cetera, et cetera. So just, just having everything put on the blockchain is is going to improve our lives yeah. quite a bit. So, and that's another reason I think China is getting super excited about cryptocurrency. Yeah. Because companies are actually implementing blockchain, like really implementing it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool actually what China is doing, especially in this last month, compared to the last 12. I mean, China has been getting so much more involved in just these last 30 days than they have in the last year. And I think one thing that was interesting they announced recently was they're starting to look into ways to use the blockchain to process invoices for all the small and medium-sized businesses in their country. And that is going to make like so much money flowing through the blockchain. And I think it's going to make it a no-brainer for them to realize that why haven't we been doing this all along? Right. Right? Yeah. And so China has like three to four times the population in the U.S. If you guys figure, again, they're only now starting to like really get into this stuff. And they've always been ahead of us with the blockchain and cryptocurrency as well. Yeah. I mean, of course, they've had the banning and then loving and banning, but but they they've been the people have been definitely ahead of the game than, than the people in America have mm -hmm. been. Absolutely. I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing how their involvement actually impacts the growth of the markets. You know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, but also just in general when people become more aware and more educated on these different uses in their country, I think that will spur a lot of innovation. 100%, so. I agree. Well, China always has a huge impact on cryptocurrency. Every time they have like a, a banning scare or FUD in China, or you know, like this month there's been a, a, a welcoming of crypto. So there's, there's always a huge, huge impact that it has. Like the, just the, the Chinese, immunization thing had like a 50% impact on like v chain went up 50% just because of that yeah. they have a huge huge part of crypto and then also whenever they have their new years their Chinese New Year's you know crypto plummets so I think that they're a huge impact one of the biggest on yeah. cryptocurrency absolutely so um, we hope you guys have enjoyed this and uh, before I actually end this episode I just want to say one more thing which is there's a really cool company their name is Oben, O-B-E-N, and I encourage you to check them out. They're doing some really amazing things in the AI space, but also with like machine learning, there's like augmented reality, there's mixed reality, they're trying to introduce the blockchain as well. So if you guys wanna check them out, I would highly encourage you to do so. They actually even have their coin on, uh, where is it, Huobi, and also Bitfinex right now. They haven't even launched yet, so this is very privy info. But if you go and check out their website, I guarantee you, you will see the value in what they're doing. And you also may decide for yourself to go and get their token before they officially launch. Of course, any advice you take from us may result in you going broke and dying. But You're you gonna know, die. Yeah, just, it's, all, it's your own decision <laughs> at the end of the day. We're not, we're not financial advisors. We're just trying to help you 
understand the crypto markets and what's happening. We like to think so. that, that we know crypto, you know, a little bit above average, minimum, you know, mm -hmm. above average. We've been in crypto this space for a while and I have a brand in crypto and he has Crypto Daily News and together we make quite an awesome team. But again, we are not professional financial advisors. Yeah. Hence the disclaimer. Yes. So anything you say, I mean, anything we say may, may result in you going broke and dying. But besides <laughs> that, we hope you guys have enjoyed. We'll see you on the next episode. Chelsea Penner, Kevin Steinman, Crypto Daily News. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks everyone for checking in and out. I know it's like Saturday night and you have other things to do, but thank you so much for joining us. And again, we are filming for Crypto Daily News and this is Kevin. Crypto Daily News, folks underscore crypto daily news or crypto daily news .online. check it out subscribe all that good stuff thanks everybody